live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering VTUG's New England Winter Warmer 2016. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon, and this is the Cube live from Gillette Stadium for the VTUG 10th anniversary virtualization technology user group. Uh, been talking a lot about virtualization and cloud and happy to have on the program for the first time, Sarah Zella Husky, who gave the AWS VPC keynote this morning. She is the lead site reliability engineer from Reactive Ops. Sarah, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. All right, so Sarah, uh, before we get into it, can you tell us just kind of a little bit about your background? Uh, tell us for those in the audience that don't know Reactive Ops, uh, you know, what they do. Sure, absolutely. So my background is actually in science. Yeah. Uh, I started my career as a physicist, an astrophysicist. Um, but a lot of the problems that you solve there in science have, are computer-based, Linux-based. Um, so from there I got into sysadmin uh, and then became a developer for a little while. Um, and I've kind of hit all the bases. And so I ended up in the ops world, uh, managing infrastructures and things like that. And from there I kind of made a jump into DevOps. Uh, and that's what I'm doing now at Reactive Ops. Reactive Ops is a small um, consulting firm uh, with a lot of smart people, a lot of people who know what they're doing, and what we do is we help companies transition from either their um, you know, co-location data center into AWS, build their infrastructures, architect them a solution, help them get continuous deployment, uh, you know, continuous integration type deals, uh, and then we also carry them on to manage services, so like, help with pager and monitoring and alerting and things like that. Well, wow, that's great. I, I like uh, the keynote this morning, uh, I think, about two years ago was the first time they really brought in the cloud pieces and there was right. kind of the AWS 101. Mm -hmm. um, but you gave a little bit more practical, a little bit you know, more how-to uh, on VPC. Uh, so can you explain you know, how VPC fits into the picture and why that's a good kind of starting block uh, that uh, you know, people yeah, that are looking sure, at Amazon? Sure, absolutely. So VPC is, is the building block yeah. uh, these days in AWS. Um, EC2 Classic was the original incarnation of AWS. And it was very different. Now everybody was shoved into the same you know, public IP space and there were not as many resources and not as many walls. Um, and VPC was the offering they brought to allow you to have a private cloud inside this public cloud. Um, so it's, it's kind of classic networking, but not. It's a little bit different, right? So what you want to do is transition people's knowledge from what they know about their physical servers, their physical networks, and their co-locations into the cloud. And so you do that with VPC. And really, people need to know the building blocks. What does my network look like? What are the routing tables? What are the security uh, options I have available to myself? Um, and so we went in depth with VPC today, and I'm hoping that a lot of people took out from that hey, I, I have knowledge about these types of things and here's how I can move into the cloud and, and carry that knowledge through. Okay. Yeah, when, when we look at AWS, uh, VPC is one of the leading points when they talk about their hybrid solutions because it kind of bridges from you know, my on-prem environment to the cloud. What, what do you right. see, how, how are customers, you know, do those terms mean anything to them? How do they think about kind of their on-prem and the public cloud and how those things tie together? Sure, we have a, a, a huge range of customers. Um, some customers are in an on-prem situation and they want to make the full jump to AWS and that's a migration. Um, and some customers have sensitive data, databases or um, you know, storage, things like that, that they want to keep on-prem. They want to keep it secret uh, and safe and what they feel is controlled. And so uh, you know, VPC gives you the ability to have both of those situations. You can connect your on-prem, your co-location to the VPC securely and you can run services in both locations or you can migrate yourself. And we see customers that run the whole gamut. Yeah, so uh, what would you say are some of the kind of the largest misconceptions that people have uh, when it comes to using AWS resources? A lot of people are frustrated. They think that it's not secure because it's public cloud, right? Um, and that was, I think a lot of the misconceptions came from EC2 Classic. Um, it, it is a much different beast now than it was when it started. And as you can see with AWS, they come out with new features every day, every week. There's a huge list, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so people don't know what the, the now is. Um, and so I say most of them are worried about um, security, obviously. Um, and Amazon has come out with a lot of new features lately to help with that. Um, another of the misconceptions is that um, 
you are sharing hardware with others. Uh, and for a lot of security compliances, that's not allowed. Uh, but not only can you have single tenant hardware in the public cloud, but Amazon actually uh, will work with you. They will sign BAAs and things like that for particular security compliances to help you mitigate your, um, your security. So. Yeah. yeah, you bring up a couple of really good points there. Number one is, of course, the cloud is changing so much mm -hmm. that the cloud that, gosh, if I looked at it, not even last year, but last month, right. uh, it might have changed. Yeah. Uh, and the second thing, uh, you know, we, we found in our survey and our t talking to customers, is if I haven't done it, security seems like this big wall. Oh, absolutely. And then if I <laughs> dig in and I look at it, and most people, you know, you go look at your own environments mm -hmm. and you think about the security that I have there. I mean, one of the number one things I talk to most customers and they're like, you know, <laughs> where's security on your priority list and then where's security on your projects? And it was like, oh, if I only had more time, mm -hmm. I would handle more of my security issues. Right. But if I could go to the cloud, boy, they're they're updating it, they're changing it, they're they're much more proactive than anybody is inside their own Absolutely. data Absolutely, I mean, it's in Amazon's best interest to give you the security that you can control. And actually, you're right. A lot of people are worried about digging in. It seems like a big wall, but it's actually pretty simple in AWS. Uh, they give you the ability to have public and private subnets. They give you the ability to have network ACLs. And they give you the ability to have security groups. And those are three very basic security tools that will allow you to get 99% there. Um, and they're adding new things every day with AWS config, which will monitor your instances configurations, uh, and other things that will give you insight into the security that you have in your VPC. Yeah, so you, you mentioned uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Mm -hmm. How are customers wrapping their heads around this? Because you know, we think it's kind of the typical IT environment. And you know, my refresh cycle for hardware, you know, five to seven years, my update on you know, major software, you know, right. 12 to 18 months, you know, even patching you know, might only be once a, once a month if you're lucky, versus right. if I go to the cloud, I mean, they, they take care of it, but you know, kind of the, the DevOps culture and CICD is, you know, we, we should be flipping things on its head as to right. how fast we do this. So where are our customers and how, do, how does your company help them? So uh, actually we find a lot of customers uh, that we take on are in a position where they're treating their cloud account as if it is classic. Yeah. They don't update instances all the time. They have long running instances that aren't patched, that aren't updated, and they're afraid to do so. Yeah. Um, but the more we talk to customers and say, you can have an immutable infrastructure. You can stand up an instance configured and with your application deployed on it, uh, and then you can throw it away and stand up a new one You know, five minutes later. You don't have to worry about sysadmin tasks. Um, and I would say most customers are very excited about the fact. They are interested in not having to deal with all of these baby servers, right? Um, and so I'd say a lot of them are very excited about it. They just don't know where their developers fit in. So they're developers who need to tweak things or make things special for particular situations. That's where customers have a, a hard time like wrapping their head around immutability. Okay, so you know, th let's maybe talk a little bit about DevOps. Then it's a kind sure. of a major focus of uh, reactive ops. You know, what does DevOps mean to your customers, and you know, how are they? You know, how does it help them? Your, your typical customer. Yeah, DevOps is an interesting nebulous concept, uh, and a lot of people are unsure. Yeah. Um, to me, DevOps is—it's not all about the tools. It is a culture. Yeah. Uh, it is a culture in which your developers need to be open to uh, working with your infrastructure. And you need to work your infrastructure so that it is usable from your devs. Um, and a lot of the conversations we have with our customers is what, what do your developers need? How do they be more productive? Um, and why uh, does your infrastructure have to be so strict? Why can't we make it flexible? Why can't we make it work for them? And a lot of the conversations are around uh, productivity and you know, making your business work for you. Um, and so at Reactive Ops, we're really about um, making all of the tools, which a lot of people think tools defines DevOps, uh, you know, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, configuration management, automation, those types of things. They're really just steps along the way to get your developers uh, to be more productive. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, in, in some ways, uh, it sounds like an extension of uh, what we've talked from virtualization, mm -hmm. which was getting out of your silos, being more flexible, right. um, and uh, you know, 
IT needs to be an enabler of business to re be re able to respond to business and move fast. That's right. um, so it, 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 does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, really, at the end of the day, you just want to be able to show your product to your customers, right? Um, and any roadblocks, any bottlenecks that you have uh, need to be addressed. We are not in the inflexible, traditional IT world anymore. Things change from day to day, and there's no reason to, you know, uh, to not be flexible. Okay, do you have some examples of specific types of applications that kind of VPC and DevOps really make sense for customers? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, just think of financial companies. Um, so, say you have an investment platform. Uh, you need to make changes with the market. You need to make changes uh, you know, as your competitors have other offerings. And these changes may be to the minute. Um, and so, uh, your code needs to be flexible to the minute. And so, if you can deploy multiple times a day to adjust to the market, to uh, customers, uh, c current events, things like that, um, that's the only way you can do business. So if you were to deploy once a quarter, once a month, you would never be able to be competitive in that field. Um, so that's one of the examples that I would say. Okay, um, so I believe this is your first time at the VTUG. Yes. Uh, so I, I guess when we look at events, you know, there's been a lot of changes. I, when I, I talk to uh, most people that are in the you know DevOps, very software development standpoint, you know, meetups uh, seem more popular than mm -hmm. uh, you know even you know. The, the, the user groups are relatively small, but happen on a regular cadence. So right. maybe, wh what are you seeing out there? Where do people go to like learn from their peers, uh, get involved? So if we're talking about conferences, meetups, yeah. I would say yes, in the devops -y world, yeah. um, the, the meetup, the user group is the core of it. Uh, you're going to the city that you live near, so Boston or New York or whatever big city, and you meet once a month. And what you're doing is the, um, you know, the community, they don't even have to be big name people, will come in and they'll show you their experience with a tool, an open source tool, or here's how we did this, or here's how we did that. And people are making uh, it easier for others to pick up those projects. Um, another thing that helps a lot is social media. Um, you know, there are, you know, Twitter, people who just live on Twitter and they say, here's my new project, I've posted it on GitHub, please take a look. Um, and so those types of things are big in DevOps. Um, and the bigger conferences by DevOps tools, um, you know, like DockerCon or Ansible Fest, things like that are very popular um, in, learning to bridge the gap between dev and ops. Okay, uh, any final uh, you know, feedback you'd want to give to the community? Please, it sounds, sounds like you know, meetups and uh, you know, online, there, there's a lot of places uh, to get involved. Uh, everybody just make sure they've got a GitHub account and uh, you know, start <laughs> plugging away on code. Yeah, so I would <laughs> say if you're interested in, in, in pursuing de what DevOps can do for you, yeah. Uh, start using the open source tools. The, all of the tools that the big companies, the Netflixes and uh, you know, the Disneys and all the, of the world use are mostly open source tools. And the community in GitHub and Twitter will show you how to use those to be effective. So there's no end to the possibilities. Yeah, uh, so y you made me think of one last question. Uh, you know, sure. I, I think of you know, open source is hugely impossible, but we seem to have this, this dichotomy mm -hmm. of you know, you talk to most users and if it's build versus buy, mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily have the understanding, so I'd rather somebody put something together uh, to right. buy it. I, I look, you know, hyperconvergence is a big discussion at this event mm -hmm. that can put together the pieces. You know, open source tends to be more of a, a build it. Uh, you know, how do you reconcile those two worlds and, and, and where do you see things Absolutely, going? there are plenty of companies like my own, Reactive Ops, that will do this for you. So we have the knowledge and expertise of all of these open source tools and what we've done is put them into a framework that can get you from A to B because we've had that experience. And there's plenty of products out there, uh, ours, um, Rancher OS is one I can think of, that will use the same tools, give you the accessibility if you want to then manage it your own, but will get you from A to B faster without you having to have all that knowledge up front. Okay, well Sarah, really appreciate you taking time. Thanks for sharing with the community. No and we'll be back with lots more coverage here from the VTUG. Thanks for watching.